Hey guys, welcome to the part two of DynamoDB data modeling series. Now in the previous episode, we discussed about five steps for DynamoDB data modeling. Now let's put that into practice and come up with a data model for an example use case. Imagine that you are given a task to build a multi-tenant project management tool. Now this is a SaaS product, so any organization can sign up for an account online. So multiple organizations can create account in the tool. So you need to have multi-tenant support. And the main two objectives of this tool is to manage organization projects and assign employees within these projects. Now in order to start data modeling for this application, let's start with step number one. That is to draw an entity relationship diagram. Now there are three main entities in our application. We have organization entity, projects and employees. Let's look at the attributes for each entities. Now for an organization, you have a unique organization ID and then it has a name and there's a tier that the organization belongs to. So this is basically, it could be the free tier or the professional or premium tier, or something like that. So you choose a tier when signing up for this application. Then we have projects. Uh, there's a project ID to uniquely identify a particular project. There's a name and there's a type. Now there are two types of projects. There is agile projects and fixed bit projects. And the status of the project and mainly we are updating status if the project is on hold. Then we have employees. For an employee, another unique ID, employee ID, employee name, date of birth and email. Now in the diagram, you can see the entity relationship is also shown. For an organization to projects, there's a one-to-many relationship. One organization can have multiple projects. Similarly, one organization can have multiple employees as well. So there's another one-to-many relationship between organization and employees. But between employees and projects, there's a many-to-many -many relationship because one employee can be part of many projects and one project can have many employees. So in the next step, we will further break down these relationships so we can further understand how to do data modeling for this type of a project. Step number two, identify relationship. Now we have these three entities organization, projects, and employees. Now, I've broken down that many-to-many -many relationship into two one-to-many relationship by introducing another entity called project employees. So between employees and project employees, there's a one-to-many relationship. And between projects and project employees, again, one-to-many relationship. Now, even at this stage, we can identify that we need an inverted index to query one of the relationships. For example, to identify an employee's projects, we can use primary key relationships. But to query the other side of the many-to-many -many relationship or the employees that is part of projects, we have to use an inverted index. More on that later. Okay, now let's move on to the third step. That is identifying the access patterns. Now, there are three main entities, including another sub-entity. So let's consider each of these entities and find out what are the access patterns. Now, if we start with organization, first, we should be able to do all the CRUD operation for an organization. We should be able to create an organization, read an organization, update an organization, and delete an organization. So that's a one access pattern. And then we should be able to find all the projects of an organization. Now, remember, there's a one-to-many relationship between organization to projects. So we should be able to find all the projects belongs to an organization. Similarly, all the employees belongs to an organization. And apart from that, we should also be able to find all the projects and employees for a given organization. And there's another access patterns. This is about finding an organization by name, not by using the unique ID, the organization ID, but by using the name, just like a filter that we have to use in our front end. Now let's say these are the main access patterns that we have for an organization. Moving on to projects, there is again CRUD operations for a project, create, read, update, and delete operation for one particular project. And then we'll have another front-end filter to be satisfied that is about finding a project by name. We also have finding employees assigned to that particular project. And remember, there are two types of projects, agile and fixed bid. So we should be able to find all the agile projects as well as fixed bid projects as well. 
Now the last one is about finding on hold projects. Now let's move on to employees. So similarly, we have CRUD operations for an employee, create, read, update, and delete for an employee, and then finding all the projects that an employee is part of, because there's a many to many relationship between projects and employees, and we've broken down it to two one to many relationships. And finally, we should be able to find an employee by name, the front end filter, okay? So we covered the three main entities, but there's another entity called project employee. So here, the main access pattern is about assigning an employee to a particular project. So step number four is about identifying the primary key for our table. So now that we have a good understanding about main access patterns, let's decide on what primary keys that we should use for identifying these entities. So we are going to have a single table for our application. And the primary key for that table is a composite of partition key and the sort key. The partition key is also known as the hash key and the sort key is also known as the range key. So I assume you are familiar with DynamoDB hash or the partition key and sort or the range key. But just in case, hash or the partition key determines the correct partition that the data should be stored behind the scene. So to identify the partition of that particular data, DynamoDB used this value of the partition key. For example, let's say the partition key for an organization item is org hash one, two, three. So it uses that value and take it and pass it to a hash function. And the result of that hash functions determines which partition the data should be stored or retrieved. So in this case, this organization item, where to put this item in which partition. So since it uses a hash function to determine this value, we call this key as the hash key or the partition key since this determines the partition of that particular data item then we have sort key now this is about arranging the items within a partition so dynamodb uses this key to arrange items within an partition and also we can use this sort key for multiple queries we will see that in a bit now since we are using both partition key and the sort key as our primary key the composition of these two keys has to be unique so we have two main objectives when deciding this primary key or the hash and the sort key in this case. Number one, the primary key should be able to uniquely identify each entity within our single table because otherwise we cannot use a single table to store all these entities. And number two is that we should be able to decide these primary keys for each entity targeting to retrieve multitude of data using a single query. Now, I hope you have noticed we have different prefixes. For example, here, org hash, and then we have pro hash or project hash. So I've used different patterns for each entity. So what is the main reason for this? Because unlike relational database, when we query multiple tables and gather data and then shape that data to the query that is received from the client and send it to client, in NoSQL database like DynamoDB, we store the data in the shape of the query so that we can use these string patterns to query multitude of data in a single request, thereby increase the query performance. So let's see examples in a bit. Now let's focus on organization entity. Now here, the partition key is capital O-R-G hash, then whatever the organization ID. Then we have a sort key, starts with hash metadata hash. Now this is basically a placeholder. And then you have the organization ID. Now let's look at some example queries for organization. Now these are our access patterns that we have identified earlier. So in order to do the CRUD operation for an organization, create, read, update, and delete, we should be able to uniquely identify an organization. For that, we can use our primary key and the sort key. Now look at this example. Now let's say there's an organization with the organization ID equals to one, two, three, four. So now we can use our primary key and the sort key to uniquely identify this organization ID. Now here's an example. PK equal capital ORG hash. Now this is the pattern, the prefix of the partition key. Can you see here? And then the organization ID one, two, three, four. And then sort key is equal to hash metadata. So this is the placeholder value and then one, two, three, four. Since we have given exact value for both partition key and sort key, 
there is a only one record in that table because remember the partition key and the sort key which is our primary key is unique so thereby we can identify this organization and perform all the CRUD operations now let's look at the other one find all projects of an organization now here we are expecting multiple projects it's not a single item right so we are going to use the query operation here and as the primary key for that query, we are going to use pk equal org hash 1234. And the sort key, we are going to use begins with operator. So I say, give me all the items that begins with pro hash belonging to this org hash 123 organization. Now, similarly, we can use the next query to find the employees of an organization. So for both organization and projects, an organization and employees has one to many relationship. So here again, I say my partition key is org hash 1234, this organization, and give me items that begins with EMP hash. So it will return only the employee records. Now, if I want to get both employees and projects, then I should not even provide a value for the sort key. I'm just only giving my partition key org hash one, two, three, four. Then it will return both project items as well as employee items. So how about this access pattern? Finding the organization by its name. So using this partition key and the sort key, this is still not possible. And hey guys, uh, it looks like this video is getting a little lengthy. So let's take a break and start directly from where we left off.